Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph this system of three linear inequalities. Now, this looks like very much fun uh, that we're gonna get in ourselves into. They're pretty much all close to in standard form, except, you know, are all in standard form except for this one. Um, but so basically to graph these, uh, I am probably going to want to rewrite them all in slope intercept form. So I will do that step by step for each one of these, but I'm gonna kinda work fast because otherwise this video will take me very, very long to do. So let's start with the first one, negative 3x plus 4y is less than or equal to 15. So to solve for y, I'll add 3x. And therefore, I'm left with 4y is less than or equal to 3x plus 15. Divide by 4, divide by 4. y is less than or equal to 3 fourths x plus 15 over 4. And I'm just going to leave that as a fraction here. Um, all right, so we'll have that one. Then I do 2y plus 5x is greater than negative 12. Again, to solve for y, I'll subtract to 5x. And I'm left with 2y is greater than negative 5x minus 12. Divide by 2, divide by 2. y is greater than negative 5 halves x minus 6. That's my second equation. Now I'll do to the third equation. So I have 10y plus 60 is greater than 27 or equal to 27x. Um, so I subtract 60, subtract 60, and I get 10y is greater than or equal to 27x minus 60. Divide by 10, divide by 10. y is greater than or equal to 2, uh, I guess 27 tenths. I'm going to leave it as a fraction. 27 tenths minus um, 16 over 10. I can reduce that to 8 over 5. Man, this does not sound like fun at all. So I guess I'm going to do my best as kind of estimating. But here's my third equation. Um, all right, so now what we need to go ahead and do is graph them all. And the main important thing when graphing these is just identifying the y-intercept and the slope-intercept, or the y-intercept and your slope. Now, in the, each case of these, except really for this one, these are you know going to be kind of difficult to uh, graph. but what I would, uh, you know, recommend, um, you know, to use one using graphing um, or uh, computer application, um, and the other thing is, you know, we can just estimate. So four goes into fifteen almost four times, but it goes in there three and three fourths, which would be like three point seven five. So I'm going to estimate the y-intercept. Just the main, main important thing is we need to be able to identify what is the y-intercept and the slope. So my constant is going to be my y-intercept. So if I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, my y-intercept is a positive 3.75. And then my slope, I'm going to go up 3, 1. So if I go 3 fourths to the next one, up 3 fourths, so 1, 2, 3. So 1, 2, 3. And then I need to go over 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so now I can connect those two points. And remember, this is less than or equal to, so therefore that's going to be a solid line. For my next point, my y-intercept is negative 6. So I'll go down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now my slope here is a negative 5 halves. So instead of going down 5 over 6, I'm going to go up 5 to the left 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this inequality is greater than, so that means it's going to be dashed and not a part of my solution. All right, and the last one, which does not seem like fun at all, um, this one I have y is greater than or equal to 27 tenths. Now, I can reduce that to 2.7 over 1. And for my case, uh, I'm just, you know, we're not looking for exact. Um, not like we're doing the objective functions. We're not looking for exact intersections. We're just looking at the idea of a graph. So if I change the slope instead of 27 or 10 to 2.7 or 1, and then this is going to be um, 8 does not, or 5 does not evenly go into 8. It goes in there one time with 3 left over, which would be um, 3 fifths. And that's going to be 0.6. So that's going to be 1.6 would be my y-intercept. And then I can just follow up 2.7. So up 2.7 over 1. Just trying to estimate here. And my line is going to be solid. OK, so 
A rough little estimation, obviously using a graph paper um, or using a calculator or computer software would be better, but I think I'm pretty close to where I'm supposed to be. Now the next thing we want to do is test our solutions, determine where our shading is. We have one line that is dashed where our line, our boundary is not a part of our solution, but we need to be able to test what, where are we shading for the rest of them. Are we shading below, above, you know, what's, ha what's going on? So the first line that I graphed here, uh, I'm going to want to test that. And I'm going to use my test point 0, 0. And 0, 0 is a coordinate point, right? It has an x and a y coordinate. So to determine to shade below or above our boundary line, we want to plug in 0, 0 for x and for y and determine if that makes our inequality true or false. So if I plug 0 in for x and for y, I'm going to get 0 is less than or equal to 15, which is true for my first equation. Therefore, since it's true and my test point is below, all points below my line are going to be true. So I'm going to be shading down below. Now let's put 0 in for x and y over here. And I have 0 is greater than negative 12, which is true again for my second boundary line. So therefore, I'm going to shade towards my test point. And then for the last one, if I put 0 in for x and y, I have 60 is greater than, 60 is greater than or equal to 0. And that's going to be for that line. Oh, I went down. I was supposed to go down. Crap. That's supposed to be, I went up 1.6. That needs to be down, down 1.3. And then up, down 1.6. So 1, 2, 0.7. My bad. I graphed that. That's a negative, right? So therefore, that line. I graphed incorrectly. Thank you for letting me know. So that one is true, which is to above my line. So I'm going to shade towards it. So therefore, you can see this feasible region is going to be this nice little triangle inside of here. All right. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a system of three linear inequalities. Thanks.